Hello YouTube. Guys, you know I talk a whole lot to the younger guys and the reason well the reason why I do that is because uh, I train some younger boxers and I've always I've spent a lot of time uh, over the years, especially the past decade with at-risk kids. So, I'm going to talk about how to identify a gang. Uh, and you kids need to steer clear of all gangs. It's not good to be in a gang. You think you, you know, make you feel like you belong. They bend and warp and twist reality to make you think it's you against everybody else they make you uh, feel very belonged and correct in bad things that you do be it theft uh, be it uh, even kidnapping for ransom of others uh, all sorts of evil things, the violence that goes along with gangs. And we're going to talk about how to, do, how to spot a gang very easily. And I'm going to use the biggest gang uh, and, and how you would spot the biggest gang in any big city, inner city, First thing you got to make yourself aware of is how they congregate, obviously. You see a bunch of them congregating, you know, they have a bunch of cars, they'll come up on you and they'll get out of the cars or whatever vehicles they're in. Uh, they, when you see them congregating in the streets, and you'll know when you see them because Typically, they all have gang colors on. And the colors will vary from place to place a little bit, but you can always identify them uh, by looking at their actions, what they do, and the colors that they wear or carry. Another thing you can look at is uh, to spot a gang uh, easily is uh, and this doesn't mean everyone people are getting tattoos up and down their arms and necks and chest and things nowadays uh, it's more typical today uh, but when they congregate uh, and there's a bunch of tattooed people congregate and they all got tattoos that are similar running up and down their arms maybe their necks or their hands or what have you uh, forearms and wrist areas, up to shoulders and whatnot. Uh, when they're congregating and the tattoos are similar in nature or scope or placement on the body, uh, very possible it's a gang there. So the colors, the actions, and tattoo visibility is a great indicator of how to spot a gang and you want to steer clear of them. Now we're going to get down to brass tacks here. I've done told you how to spot a gang. Uh, now we're going to talk about the biggest gang in the United States right now. Uh, I'm going to be frank here. I'm going to use some of the common words. The biggest pile of blue shit. Blue shit you ever seen in your life. And yeah, I said blue shit. Uh, the biggest gang in the United States right now is the boys in blue. The police. And you can't trust them. And I'm sick of hearing people say, well, there's good ones and there's bad ones. No, they're, they're bad down the thin blue line. 
They're all bad. And here's why. The good ones won't speak up and uh, protect you against the bad ones. They never do that. Uh, just like a criminal gang, uh, you get a good one that's wanting to come out, he'll never testify or turn state's evidence against a bad one. He's too scared to. Because they rule through fear and intimidation, not through rule of law. And that's what policing in America is turned to. Uh, let's see. About 23, 24 years ago, uh, when we got into the war in Afghanistan and the war in Iraq, shortly thereafter, so it's been about 20 years of this, uh, broken soldiers were, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines were coming home. And the first damn thing they start doing is hiring the psychos that were in there, the battle damage, the ones that have great psychological problems, and putting them on police forces. And they have infiltrated with that. I, I was talking about that 20 years ago. It was a central focus with me. And when I ran for U.S. Congress, I made it a central thing to talk about that. Uh, in the conservative of conservative Republican ranks, I made that an issue. And it was very unpopular of me to do that, but I did it. Uh, and uh, I was old enough then to see through the bullshit and the blue shit and the control that was starting to take place in America. And policing today, you just join in a gang. You're, you're going to be in there. If you go in there wanting to change the world, do the right thing, they're going to corrupt you. They're going to corrupt you. And they're going to pollute your mind that you're going to have blind, uh, horse blinds on that are so dark and create such tunnel vision with you you won't be able to see the truth about what you're doing. Uh, there's a lot of things I could talk about. I'm going to put one example down in the description box below uh, of a video where police come down the street where the guy lives, the guy's in the front yard, do, maybe doing yard work or something. And uh, just watch the video. And... There's other way more severe videos. The video I'm going to post down here is just a uh, where they uh, a guy ends up filing a very valid citizen complaint and he gets himself locked up that he filed the complaint. And the stupid officer sitting there, uh, they end up basically kidnapping his wife until he comes down and turns himself in. Uh, on a bogus charge that they wait a week or so to file, and they only file it a week or so after he files a complaint against the officers. And uh, these, these officers, they don't care what the law is. They're operating uh, with uh, impunity, knowing that there's nothing going to be done back to them. Uh, only in the rarest of rare of cases are these officers getting uh, any law served upon them. And uh, we've got to weed these people out. They, there needs to be some psychological type of examinations going on all across the United States. Uh, and, and there needs to be a great weeding out of these officers. Um, another thing that they've done, uh, because of racial tensions, uh, departments all across America have started hiring uh, another group of non-qualified people. Uh, the, the veterans coming back were not qualified, uh, psychologically, mentally, uh, education-wise, common sense-wise. So their answer 
to the problem that they created there is go out and just hire people by race. So they've hired a lot of black police and that are not qualified and it's created additional problems. Additional problems. It hasn't eased much of anything, it's just made things worse. Another thing with policing that's horrible, uh, that, not, that police do not admit themselves, is women officers. Women officers are the most dangerous thing for male officers known to man. And to any of you good policemen out there that may see this video, uh, a, the biggest threat to a good cop uh, is a bad cop and, and you good ones better start waking up and realizing that because when when the good ones don't come home to their their wife or their children or their husband if they're a female and their children is generally due to another person that's been out here mistreated by other bad police and the good the good cop, Oh, get the retribution for what a bad cop has done. And the psychology thing, I really don't know what could be done there. Um, uh, human resources departments across the country and in many, many venues just need to disappear. That'd be a good start. Uh, you either do your damn job or you get your ass fired. How about that? These unions need to be put in the garbage can. Uh, as far as any public safety service job, be it police, fire, EMT, or whatever. And uh, that'd be a, a good start. And, uh, but the psycholo psychology end of it, I don't, I don't really know what would be the perfect answer there. Uh, I really don't, because psychologists now are saying that Men can have babies. If you just think it in your head, it can happen. And psychologists and psychiatrists encouraging 11 and 12 year old kids to not go through puberty uh, and turning a little boy into a little girl or a little girl into a little boy. And all of that's been disastrous. We're dealing with fake, false medical uh and science across the board in the first world. So I don't rightly know how we could affect that, but they need to come up with some type of looking into the mind standards to these guys, because these guys are trash. And uh, we've, we've never... I've never personally took shit off of them. Uh, not, not since after the last two wars we got in. Not at least a few years after that. Uh, I started seeing the abuse and the, uh, the cronyism and the where the police is us against you attitude and the sickness and the uh, cancerous growth within within departments across America. So I, I, I just don't take shit off of none of them. Uh, I did have, after that, uh, my next door neighbor uh, was a, a former sitting sheriff, the sheriff, and uh, he was also uh, head of the Department of Inspections Investigations in my state uh, at the time he lived beside me and he was a high, high up guy but he and I, uh, I, I drank some at the time and we'd sit and we'd have a couple of beers here and there in the back do the barbecuing thing and he was a good guy and uh, he was starting to see this stuff back in the mid 2000s and uh, he was starting to see it vividly and he would tell me the stories he'd say damn these guys coming back from Iraq or Afghanistan they're fucked up in the head and uh, all anybody is saying is hire them hire them 
hire them. Uh, they're coming back. They need good jobs. And uh, so I was lucky to be able to hear about these things many years ago uh, from horses that were in it, from the true horses' mouths that were there when it, all this mess and this bull crap started to happen. So uh, I'm at the point now, I never say, well, there's some good ones and some bad ones because the good ones are never standing up against the bad ones. You very rarely see that, ever. There's some good bank robbers, too. There are some bank robbers that go out here and rob banks and have shot a bank teller that had good reasons behind why they did what they did. But that don't make them good. And when someone sworn to uphold uh, prime, in the prime factor, the Constitution of the United States, then their state constitution, and then their local ordinances and, and at, at the bottom, and they don't uphold none of those. They don't, you know, and the top supreme document, the Constitution, if there's an ordinance that's unconstitutional down here, uh, that be damned the Constitution. They don't care. And there's thousands, tens of thousands of YouTube videos with cops all across the country standing there saying, I don't give a damn about the Constitution. Well, it may be unconstitutional. I don't care. What are you going to do about it? There are tens, if not hundreds of thousands of incidents put up on, here on YouTube every year. Hundreds of thousands. And where are the good cops standing? Where, where, are, where is a sitting cop? Uh, where, where is his YouTube channel saying, hey, I got bad cops around me. You know, I'm sure there's one or two out there, but it's one or two, so I blanket them all for what they are. They're tattooed. Gang members, and they have their colors to identify them. And that's it. No more, no less. You can have somebody trying to kill you, and they will pull up. And there's repeated times that this has happened. The person that's called the police for protection is the one the police shoot. Because they're not psychologically able to handle it. It's gung-ho, hit the shore, blasting, shooting. Uh, it's not necessary to get to the bottom of what's happening. Uh, your papers, please, or you go to jail. Uh, lying, planting drugs in people's cars to get promotion. Uh, promotions, uh, picking people up and getting them with a DWI or DUI when they haven't been drinking and charging these people. Officers are getting busted left and right, and there's a trail of hundreds of hundreds of lives ruined before the cop does get in trouble, or thousands of lives, and all these cases going against these people, and they've lost their jobs, their incomes, their homes. Uh, and it's just a societal breakdown. And uh, we got to fix that. We are a utter failure when it comes to policing those in charge of the hen house. And we have literally put the fox in charge of the hen house. So, young people, that's how you start a gang. That is a gang. And be weary of them. Be weary of them. And damn be sure if you join that gang, you, you be apprised you're not going to win against them. You'll go in wanting to change the world. And you'll come out having made the world a more awful, despicable place.